Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex here. Welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about a subject which has came up quite a bit over the last week or so in the Formula 1 world, which is that apparently Brendan Hartley is, you know, under pressure really. He could be losing his job after this Monaco Grand Prix. That's what a lot of people are seeming to say. Now, of course, all of the same sort of statements have come out as soon as that has been talked about. Of course, Brendan Hartley has come out and said, no, he's not under pressure, and Red Bull's doing the same sort of thing as well. But it's the same sort of thing that happens year after year. We get these sort of leaks that something might happen. Uh, a lot of the time it doesn't happen, but with Red Bull, you know that there's a higher likelihood that it could happen because they're quite ruthless with their decisions. So let's talk about it in this video, and then let's also talk about what are the options at the end of this one. So by the looks of it, it looks like the people at the top of Red Bull are a little bit disappointed with how Brendan Hartley has started this season. Now, we didn't really expect anything towards the end of last year. He was sort of thrown into it after finishing a World Endurance season with Porsche. Uh, we didn't expect him to really be that good in the last part of last year because, of course, he wasn't, well, he had no experience in the car, really. I mean, he, he had driven Formula 1 cars in the past, but not this year, that sort of thing. But then coming into 2018, he's had all that pre-season testing. We kind of expect him to be a little bit closer to Pierre Gasly. I think a lot of us didn't expect him to beat Pierre Gasly, but at least be a little bit closer. By the looks of it, there's also some pressure from the Honda side of the camp as well, because of course, they want to get a Japanese driver in the sport. Now, we haven't had a Japanese driver in the sport since Kamui Kobayashi. Of course, he was a very good driver, but unfortunately, he didn't really get the luck with the right seat at the right time. So unfortunately, he never really managed to stay around in Formula 1. But Whilst I don't think he's an option to come back to a Toros or Honda, uh, there definitely are some which we'll talk about later on this video, but there is definitely pressure from Honda now. that They've sort of, you'd say, they've got a bit more of a decent power unit this year. There's definitely uh, not as much of a gap between them and Renault and the rest of them, but yeah, there's still probably a bit of a gap, but you know what I mean. There's not as much of a gap as there has been in previous years, so Honda want to have a, a driver that can sort of represent their brand, and maybe they don't think Brendan Hartley is that person. So hopefully this isn't taken the wrong way, but... I did find this whole appointment in the first place quite strange because looking at Brendan Hartley's single seater career, it was never that impressive in the first place. I mean, obviously, much better than I would ever be, but you know, we had to put this into perspective. He wasn't that successful in uh, Formula 2 or GP2 as it was back then, and the same with Formula Renault 3.5 and the junior formulas even before that. He did struggle in the single seater categories, but as soon as you put him in an LMP1 car and a Porsche, He's an incredibly quick driver, so I don't know whether it's just that he doesn't really suit the style of driving in a Formula 1 car or a single-seater car. That could be possibly the option, but this whole thing sort of just, it came back so quickly towards the end of last year. I don't know whether they were just sort of very, very, you know, just, they wanted to get that move Kvyat out of Toro, so they wanted to make that happen, and they just wanted to get anyone in. I'm not saying uh, that Brendan Hartley's in anyone, but you know what I mean. They wanted to get just get someone in to get Kvyat out. That's kind of what it felt like. I mean, it, they could have surely just waited a few races towards the end of the season to to see how Kvyat did. And I mean, Brendan Hartley was thrown into that Toro and did worse than Kvyat did for the rest of the season. So it's a tough one. But I found the whole you know decision at the start of or the end of last year. A bit of a mess really and I don't know I don't know whether it really helped Brendan Hartley as well being thrown in like that so I think this whole decision has come back to bite Red Bull obviously tore also somewhat this year because they have started off with a somewhat decent car and Honda obviously have a somewhat decent power unit this year I mean they're putting out some big top-end uh, speed figures so there's obviously curing one of the problems where they had in previous years the reliability still not quite there but in general it is improving but by making this quick decision to cut Kvyat and put Brendan Hartley in, it sort of all messed it up a little bit, you could say, because in a way, if they'd maybe not been so quick to fire Kvyat, maybe he'd have a bit more confidence going into this year. And yes, I'm coming at this sort of perspective as a Kvyat fan, but I also coming at this as someone that likes Brendan Hartley as well. So I hope you understand. I'm not trying to be too biased with my opinions here. But Torosso's problem definitely is right now as they have two very inexperienced drivers trying to develop and help improve the car because yes it is somewhat decent right now but the thing is with Formula 1, you guys know this, it's not a sport where you can start off really good and then just sort of cruise your way through the rest of the season. I mean you look at it from previous seasons that say the Renault at the start of the season is better than the Mercedes was at the start of the season that is the improvement rate in Formula 1 you know you're gaining maybe even like a second maybe more throughout a season so the improvement rate is really really you know impressive impressive that's the word I was going for impressive and massive so 
you need to have two drivers in the team that can really develop the car and help you know push the team forward and two very inexperienced guy, you know guys in the team right now Gasly and Hartley they're still both very talented drivers but there's just not the experience there uh, in, in single seater Formula 1 cars I should add because I know Hartley is a little bit older but there's not experience in these type of cars for both of them to be able to develop the car in ways that maybe you thought that Science and Kvyat maybe could have done but obviously things have changed and they're not on the team. I should stop being a little bit bitter, shouldn't I? Hopefully this hasn't come across in any way that I'm having a go at Brendan Hartley because I don't think, I don't know, he always, he always said that there was the option wasn't there to come back to Toro Rosso or come back to a Red Bull sponsored team because he was still sponsored by them uh, in the World Endurance Championship and I think he always had helmet marker like, yeah, mate, I'm, I'm always happy to step into a Formula 1 car if the opportunity comes available. I think that was what he's always said, but um, yeah, so it's really, really interesting to, to see this whole move for Brendan Hartley, but I don't know whether it sort of was all rushed a bit too much and hopefully it doesn't look like I'm having just a go at Brendan Hartley because he's a nice guy. So saying all of this, the possibility is there that after this Monaco Grand Prix, he could be sacked from the Red Bull program for the second time. This happened already back, I think, 2009, 2010. He was dropped from the Red Bull program after, well, just not really impressing in the junior formulas in GP2 and World Series. He just, he didn't impress back then. Um, I think he's a much better driver now. That's pretty evident. Obviously, winning the World Endurance Championship, winning Le Mans. He has won Le Mans? Yes, he has. I think he has won Le Mans. That's probably... I don't know if that's wrong. That's bad. But... Yeah, you know, he's a much better driver now than he was back then, but at the same time, he's, what, five, six years older than Gasly, so he definitely should be better than him. At the end of the day, Torres is supposed to be a junior driver academy for Red Bull, and Brendan Hartley is quite a bit older than... Well, he's older than everyone else in the Red Bull program, full stop. But once again, that's not having a go at Brendan Hartley. I just... I thought I should put, point that out. But anyway, what are the other options? If they were to sack Brendan Hartley after this Monaco Grand Prix... Where should they go? So the first option that many people seem to be linking to this seat is Sebastian Buemi. Now, I find it's a bit of an odd one because once again, like Hartley, uh, he was sort of dropped out of the Torosso program um, back that same sort of time actually as well. Wasn't it like 2011, 2010, that sort of time? Buemi was dropped out of the, the program as well. He went to obviously racing the World Endurance Championship, still does, uh, racing in Formula E, unbelievably quick in there as well, obviously winning the championship a few years back as well. So Sebastian Buemi is very, very quick, but at the same time, I'm, I'm sort of thinking like, is he going to really want to go back to the team that he was kicked out of like five, six, seven years ago? And at the same time, is he going to want to go back to Formula 1 in a mid-table team? Because he obviously knows now, Sebastian Wemi knows how an incredibly talented driver he is, how incredibly quick he is. Obviously, in my opinion, he's probably been the best driver overall in Formula E since it started and have not been some very slow drivers in Formula E. It's a very competitive field. So what I'm basically saying right now is, would he want to go back to Formula 1 in a mid-table team? Probably not. But if maybe it's switched to Honda and maybe he stopped racing the World Endurance Championship, it, it's complicated because you also got that problem as well because Buemi is linked up with Toyota in the World Endurance Championship. Honda, Toyota, Japanese, both manufacturers. That's going to be some complications there. You don't want to get all those mixed up. So next up is the one that many people seem to be linking to this seat if it does happen, or this rumour if it does happen, is Pascal Verlein. Now I think all of us understand what a talented driver Pascal Verlein is. Maybe in some people's mind he was a little bit overhyped, but still he's an incredibly talented driver who definitely deserves to be in Formula 1 right now. But the biggest problem with Pascal Verlein is I think he would definitely come to Torosa if the opportunity arose. But the problem is, for him right now, is that, well... He's in a contract with Mercedes and DTM. So what needs to happen here? He needs to be sort of bought out of his contract by um, by Red Bull. Obviously bought out of his Mercedes contract. That could be an expensive thing, especially with Verline probably in a multi-year deal with them. But the probably more likely option is that they could sort of work together on this one. I mean, it'll be hard because once again, Mercedes is going against another manufacturer in Honda over there. And it's a bit of a, you know, battle against each other sort of thing. But I think if they can work together, I think DTM doesn't really overlap with Formula 1. I think that's something that always happens. DTM and Formula 1 never really overlap. So if they can sort of sort that out, if Verline can race in DTM and in Formula 1, that would be absolutely incredible. I think everyone would love that. The DTM fans, uh, fans would love that because they get to see Verline each week. And obviously the F1 fans would love that because we get to see a really good, talented young driver back in a sport where he probably shouldn't have been dumped out in the first place. So next up is Daniel Tictum. Now, he's a driver that's been brought into the Red Bull ranks over the last year or so. He came back after being, I think, disqualified from racing or banned from racing for a couple of years after a, a I don't know, I think basically a bad you know, manoeuvre he did when he was quite young um, in a Formula Fords, I think it was. So 
yeah, we don't need to talk about that right now because right now he's a very sensible driver, he's a very talented driver and he's deservingly involved with the Red Bull project. But the thing is what a lot of people are saying, you know, they're linking him to this seat, but at the same time I'm sort of sitting here like he's in Formula 3 right now. Um, yes, obviously he's done good in like Macau and in, in other Formula 3 races, but at the same time, is it a big jump? But then each time I think that, I also think that Max Verstappen did the same jump uh, in 2015, didn't he? He did that jump from Formula 3, not even winning the championship in Formula 3, to Formula 1 with Toro so wasn't amazing in his first season but we definitely saw the talent and yeah the rest of this history sort of thing with Max Verstappen and that could be the, the thing that happens again I mean Toro so you know famously has been brought you know bringing in drivers that may be a bit too young for Formula 1 bringing them into Formula 1 and then somewhat sometimes getting them to succeed other times obviously like um, you know maybe Al Gashwari which we talked about in a previous video maybe that's someone that was brought in a bit too early um, but you know what I mean there's a, a strong likelihood Dang Tictum could be brought into Formula 1 with Torso by the end of this year. Maybe they might leave it like they did with Kvyat last year. A little bit longer than maybe everyone would expect. Maybe we get with four or five races to go. We see Dan Tictum is, you know, getting some free practice sessions. I mean, right now he's getting some uh, races in Super Formula with the Red Bull backing. So there's a strong likelihood that something could be happening with Dan Tictum. He's just got to keep up his results this year. And possibly we could see him in a Formula 1 car by the end of the year. Maybe not racing, but definitely testing. But he's definitely talented enough, that's the thing. Next up, we've got the Japanese and Honda young driver, Nairo Fukuzumi. Probably pronounced wrong, but yeah, you guys know I'm pretty bad at my pronunciations. But anyway, he's a Red Bull-sponsored Honda driver, so you might be thinking, this is perfect. He is literally made for this role right now. He should just be you know, pushed into this role straight away. Well, his problem is he... He had a bit of an unlucky year in GP3 last year. He was definitely in the best team, but at the same time, he had two, if not three, really incredible teammates, and two of them managed to beat him, but he did have some really bad luck, which sort of brought him out of the championship battle. But he's an incredibly talented driver, Fukuzumi, and I definitely feel that he will be in Formula 1 at some point, but I think putting him in right now would be a little bit too soon. Uh, I've seen some people talk about this. He's maybe not um, quite up to the level of someone like you know, Lando Norris, uh, or maybe some other you know young drivers that you see him coming through the ranks. Maybe he's not quite on that level just yet, but I definitely think there's talent there with Fukuzumi, who we could see him in Formula One in the next couple of years. And obviously, the Honda link as well was massive. Um, but I think he's had a he's had a tough start to the season because the Arden that he's racing in the Formula Two series isn't quite as good as the likes of the Carlin and you know the ART, some of the other you know the teams on the grid where. You know, they're, they're definitely better than Arden are this year. So Arden are a bit more of a mid-table, if not, you know, towards the back end of the grid, really, in terms of their sort of facilities. So right now, I think it's going to be tough for Fukuzumi to make that jump up. But I feel like maybe if he gets a few practice sessions, which I think are rumoured for this year, um, maybe he gets those. Maybe there's a chance in the next couple of years we could see him in Toro or Honda. Or maybe it could have completely evolved by then in just to, uh, a, you know, a, a complete Honda outfit with no Red Bull backing whatsoever. So next up, I asked these suggestions from you guys. I mean, what of these other four options weren't a possibility? Who do you go for? So I've written them down right now, so forgive me for looking down, but I'm just basically reading off my list. So Antonio Felix da Costa was one that was brought up in my Twitter mentions when I, I sort of sent out a tweet about this. Um, I would personally love this. Antonio Felix da Costa is one of my favourite drivers ever. I loved watching him ever since he was in like uh, GP3, maybe even a little bit before that as well. He's just such a great driver to watch behind the, the wheel of a car is just always exciting and some of his just watch some of his gp3 moments antonio felix da costa absolute legend um yeah he's definitely probably someone that's good enough to be in formula one i mean he's been very unlucky with very bad equipment in formula e the last couple of years uh, you know in comparative terms uh, it's obviously still a very good team but the thing is uh, there are so many other good teams out there. It's, it's very hard to break through when maybe it's only a mid-table if towards back of the end car. So it is what it is. Probably, I, know, I feel like it's probably not going to be a thing because he was he was sort of he he ended all his ties by the looks of it with the Red Bull program a few years back because he was a Red Bull young driver. He was actually going to take a Kvyat seat at Toro Rosso. I think it was a couple of years back. So. That was always something that um, you know always plays on my mind as well because I like Kvyat and I like the Costa and it was always a tough decision that moment. But I don't think that this would happen, Antonio Felix Costa. But in my opinion, he definitely deserves to have been in Formula One at some point. Uh, next person on my list is Robert Kubica. Probably very unlikely. He's sort of just going through every F1 team right now. <laughs> if this was the case, if he did go to Toro Rosso, that would just be it would be very strange. I mean, you might as well throw it in there as an option, but probably quite unlikely. But at the same time, it'd be a great publicity stunt. Um, not saying that Kubica is just a publicity stunt. 
I mean, it'd be great publicity for Red Bull and all that sort of thing. The whole program, I think it'd be great for them if they get that whole thing sorted out. Uh, next up, Alex Albon. Right now, he isn't associated to any sort of Formula 1 team, uh, but he's been doing a really good job in Formula 2. Um, as of recording this right now, he's had three po uh, pole positions in a row, and I think he's currently sitting P2 in the championship as I record this video, but this video might go out after the Formula 2 race tomorrow, so things might change. Um, Jake Dennis recently tested a Red Bull car at the Catalonia test, so that's, that was an interesting one for me because he sort of stopped his uh, Formula single-seater career last year, if I remember correctly, he stopped that and started pursuing sort of McLaren racing, uh, McLaren racing, McLaren GT racing, so it looked like he'd stopped his sort of single-seater career, but that would be a, a strange move back into this, but he's an incredibly talented driver, Jake Dennis, so it always surprised me that, you know, he decided to stop his sort of single-seater career uh, last year, I'm not sure that's through budget or, the, you know, just wanted to make a career out of it, but... Uh, maybe it could be an option, and I think he, he obviously tested with Red Bull, so there's obviously some some link right there. And the last one that you guys mentioned to me as of recording this video is uh, Jack Aitken, who recently won a, a race in Formula 2. I can't see this happening whatsoever because he's a really young driver, has no really links to Honda in any way, no links to, to Red Bull in any way, but... I thought I'd mention it just because you guys left it as a response to my tweet. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thank you for watching. Leave your opinions and uh, comments and thoughts and all that sort of stuff down in the comment section down below. As of right now, if I was to give my opinion, I would say I don't think they should. Uh, I don't think they should sack him. I don't think they should. I mean, even though there might be better options by the end of the year, I think right now to throw someone into a Formula One car, you're just going to have the same issue as you've got with Hartley right now. You're going to have the same issue once again with another driver, and it's sort of just it's paring off Hartley, ruining uh, a bit of his image in a way by doing this. And at the same time, bringing in someone else too early would just be, you know, counterproductive to their career. So yeah. I think that they should stick with Hartley, at least for the majority of this season, maybe with a couple of races to go. If they're like, definitely, we're not going to have Hartley for next year. Maybe the, you know, maybe they then should get maybe Fukuzumi in. Um, maybe they should get Dan Tictum. Uh, maybe Dennis, I don't know, one of those possibly with a few races to go if they feel like they're definitely going to have Hartley for, for 2019. But nonetheless, that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And yeah, I'll see you guys around soon. More videos are to come. I've got them all in this notepad here. Um, I've just got to get around to recording them. I think I'll probably record a few more tomorrow. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. And I'll see you guys all around soon. Goodbye.